The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. Hello and welcome everybody to Scarefest Television. I'm your host, Wes Forsyth, and yes, I am making fun of the internet one more time. Um, my guest tonight is Ellen Udy. Uh, you know her, everybody, from My Bloody Valentine way back in 1981, um, my, my junior year. Um, I'm, go- I'm going to confess right now, I saw the movie in the drive-in, did not remember a damn thing about it. Just so you know, so I had to watch it again. <laughs> but um, and our my co-host tonight is a lovely and talented CC and CC. Welcome back to the show. Um, everybody, first announcement of the evening. I got to go ahead and get this out of the way. Tickets are on sale. Go to thescarefest.com. Click the ticket center link or buy tickets or whatever the hell it says. But click the ticket link. It will take you to our new ticketing platform we're using for this year. Uh, Get your tickets. Now, remember, if you have a valid ticket from 2020 and you didn't ask for a refund, it will get you into the convention with all the um, fanfare and all that stuff. Um, That's that's my intro. So uh, you, you can transition now. Thank you. Yes, we're very professional here. <laughs> oddly enough, oddly enough, uh, Ellen, not the first time you've been interviewed by a cat head. Oh, you remember that? Uh, it's not so. <laughs> cat head does not look familiar, I must say. In my in 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 my, in my extensive research, I found I found another show that you did a, 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 a interview on in October. And one of the guys apparently didn't want to turn his camera on, so he used his profile picture, which was a cat. Just so. Oh. Um, so, uh, uh, I, uh, my bloody Valentine, that must have been an awesome thing to be your first movie, uh, just right off the bat. I want to throw that out there because, like, that was your actual first movie role, wasn't it? Well, no, actually, it was my second, but it was my second movie role. Uh, and it was my second movie role with the director, George Mahalka. So I was lucky. He cast me in a little movie called uh, Pick Up Summer. <laughs> Originally called Pinball Summer, but that dates it. So they now call it Pick Up Summer. And, uh, and, uh, and then he cast me in this. So this is my first horror movie first horror movie i should have done better yeah. research um yeah it's still now this is one one thing i uh, i i've noticed about uh you've done a lot of television uh of course um uh, uh dr quinn medicine woman um yeah. what was it like having getting into a major i mean that was a major motion picture that is still a cult classic if not a classic horror movie what was it like kicking off your career uh, doing something like that that is still known to this day. Deceptive. <laughs> <laughs> because I was only, <laughs> I was only a kid. I thought this is how it goes. You want to be an actor, you audition, you get a job, it goes really well. You know, it's a Paramount film and the rest is history and, you know, you ride off into the sunset of your fame. And of course, that's not exactly how it works. So I was pretty, you know, I mean... Not to say that I wasn't appreciative, I was amazingly appreciative of it, but I also had a distorted view of what, you know, it it took me a while to figure out that sometimes you do a movie and the movie doesn't even get released. It just gets shelved. That's not uncommon. So, 
it was a really good first splash, I have to say, and uh, and really lucky. Yeah. Now, uh, once again, I hope my research is right. I understand you have not really done a lot of conventions, even though um, you are considered a scream queen. You started off oh. in a in a <laughs> classic horror movie. Uh, you moved up. Uh, you do a lot of horror now, um, in the independent films especially. Um, but I, I, I find it. Am, am I correct that you don't? You haven't done a lot of conventions. I haven't been asked to do a lot of conventions. It's the weirdest thing. People are always going to conventions. I'm like, no one's asked me yet. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I uh, but I, I do understand you have <laughs> da uh, Days of the Dead Atlanta coming up. Uh, correct? Days of the Dead Atlanta in late February? No, I'm not in that anymore. I, I oh. have no idea what happened. No, uh, apparently uh, they set me for a later date now, which is strange because, of course, February is the month for my bloody Valentine. But no, you'll have to ask. Uh, you'll have to ask my manager about that. My I and I just got got him, and he's wonderful. So he's been trying to do stuff for me, but uh, so far we haven't booked anything. Nope, I'm not in, even in the Days of the Dead. Yeah. Well, heck, my research has went all to hell for this interview. Uh, <laughs> one point i was booked for it and then yeah. and then recently i said to him what's going on with that and he said oh oh i i, I forgot to tell you um they moved the date i'm like oh okay to uh, some unknown other date so yes, did they, when i haven't paid attention they, did they move the whole convention or just moved you to because nope. now that is not, days of the dead moved me out of okay. the convention well in all fair date <laughs> Days of the it's Dead is a day. is a group of conventions, so yeah, move, moving you from one to the other, um, that's something they can get away with. Uh, CC, yeah. over to you. I ha you know, I have seen a lot of your work and a huge fan, and you are just like a chameleon in your roles. You never look the same twice. I mean, I was watching you on My Bloody Valentine, and you were this cute little, adorable little angelic looking thing yeah. and then watching you in the evil under your skin you are like this strong independent right there in your face um and then you know and in, in the uh what was the other one the wrong boy next door you played the the uh tutor and i wouldn't have even recognized you if yeah. i wasn't looking <laughs> for you yeah uh, um do you get recognized on the street very often considering you look so different in all your roles no, <laughs> I do not. I do not get recognized on the street. That's a good thing, I suppose. Um, uh, um, if I do get recognized, it would be for Dr. Quinn, just because that was a consistent role and it had more, you know, uh, of a consistent sort of, I, I was looked the same way for a number of years. So, and I look more similar to the character now. If my hair is darker, I can be more easily recognized. But no, even even so, I don't get recognized very Which often. Which looks lovely on you. Can I ask, how did you end up kind of, um, did you decide that you were going into acting and you wanted to be in horror? Or how did that happen? No, I, 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 I was, I, I got into horror because the guy, the director that discovered me, George Mahalka, uh, did did a horror movie and I was lucky enough to be cast in it but um no no I, I you know it's taken me a long time to really like horror actually although I really love doing my bloody valentine when I first started doing horror movies I wouldn't watch them I'd just do them but it's funny because as the years go by and the more the more trauma I experience in life <laughs> The more, the more I'm interested in horror movies for some reason, like I can understand the catharsis a lot better. And so I seek them out a little more. And now I'm, you know, and it's campy and it's fun. And I love the fans. Fans are amazing. You know, they're really, really sweet people. They're not what you'd expect. Um, uh, they're, they're just the nicest people. So, so, you know, I've grown in my love for horror. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, horror fans are real. They're real yeah. fans. Yeah. So they are. Now that you're watching horror, what is your favorite horror film? Oh, my favorite horror film. Jeez, Louise, that's going to be hard. Um, I 
think off the top of my head. I'm sure that I have one. You know what comes to mind, actually? A horror film that I don't even know if it was thought of as a horror film, but it certainly horrified me. It was probably one of the first horror films that I ever saw was a was a movie by Roman Polanski called The Tenant. And what? have you heard of this movie? I have heard of that movie. Terrifying. I want, I want to say they redid it just recently, not long ago, didn't they? Oh, I'm not sure. I'll have to I look think so, up. but yeah, so that was a terrifying movie. In fact, I went with a bunch of friends and I convinced everybody to go and it was at this retro theater and we didn't have to pay a lot of money and we were in high school. And uh, after he got out of the movie, they they, they read the riot act. They were so <laughs> They had been made to sit through this really terrifying movie, <laughs> really disturbing movie. So I never heard the end of it. That kind of put me off horror films for a while, but but yeah, The Tenant. And then there's, you know, uh, there's uh, another horror movie that's not necessarily thought of as a horror movie. And it's uh, it's called Cries and Whispers. And it's by mm -hmm. Ingmar Bergman. Another terrifying movie. So those are kind of the horror movies that as a kid I was exposed to. And they were so disturbing that I think that I, uh, it put me off horror movies for a while. So, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Wes, have you heard of these cries and whispers? Honestly, no, I'm not that type of person. I, if I don't hear, if I haven't heard of it, uh, no, I, uh, I've heard of Ingmar Bergman though. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's going yeah, back I there. Mean, they, I'm not even sure that they fall into the horror charm as we talk about it. That's right. Everybody, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Scarefest TV in just a couple of minutes. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com Back in 1991, saw the release of the only horror movie to win an Oscar, The Silence of the Lambs. Starring Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, the psychological horror movie delves into the mind of a madman, Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Lecter is helping rookie FBI agent Clarice, who is on the hunt for a serial killer known as Buffalo Bill. Drawing inspiration from true life, Buffalo Bill's character was crafted around known serial killers, Ed Gein and Edmund Kemper, adding an extra element of true horror to the film. The Silence of the Lambs is undoubtedly a horror masterpiece, and its impact 
on pop culture is felt even today, 30 years after its release. Welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. Our special guest tonight is Ellen Udy. Um, now, I've watched... I watched, uh, I, I went through uh, my little uh, Amazon Prime and I watched uh, several of your movies, but I am going to get us off the rails now. I found the best stuff up for you on YouTube. First of all, oh, yeah. the, uh, the uh, w w w let's see, it's uh, The Violin, the comedy sketch you did, I guess six years ago or so. Yeah. That was Red Skelton quality comedy. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, in the process so of looking much. for that, in the process of looking for that, I found a, you've done a lot of <laughs> independence, not a strong enough word. What is it? You're putting on a monthly cabaret show in like your neighbor's yard or something? Well, it's actually my yard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yard if my art no longer becomes available but right now i think my yard is still available so we're doing it there um but actually during covid we stopped doing our last we've been doing it for over four years close to five years and then and then covid hit so i don't know how that counts anymore but um but yeah i do a cabaret show uh it's always it it, it graduated from being at several different bars but it was always set in my house in 1924 Berlin and then one day I just thought well if it's set in my house why don't I do it in my house to make it more environmental and so a couple of years ago maybe about two years ago we switched it to my house and in the winter we do it in the house we've got a stage in the house and in the summer we do it out in the front yard yeah it's really fun now uh, I only watched a couple of them is this like the neighborhood or are these people does it you know from show business uh for the most part, <clears throat> they're actually people that I know. They're professionals that I okay. know that uh, love the idea, and they're kind enough to donate their time to this show. We don't make any money off of it, really, and uh, most of them are pros. But in between the pros, there are some neighborhood people. It's not true. Even our neighborhood people are pros. Everybody's a pro, actually, <laughs> but there are some neighborhood pros, too. <laughs> um. Now, along these lines, in my vast research, um, okay, uh, for you, what it's called, but the with the 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 curtains hanging from the ceiling and you swing from them. Um, oh yeah, uh, 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 that's uh, uh, silks. Yeah, silks. Okay. Silks. Uh, told, yeah. <laughs> so, you, uh, I came across a, a video of you doing that. You did it very well, and. Um, then uh, 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 along those lines, there was something else. I'm just saying, everybody, go on YouTube, type in her name, and it will entertain you for hours. Uh, oh, the stilts. You did one of your skits, I guess, through the cabaret. You were walking on stilts. I am a stilt walker. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, yeah. I, I, I have I have a circus, uh, cir circus bug, definitely, like a creaky old, cranky old, scary old circus within me, <laughs> within my, within my soul. Now, now to come up with a legitimate <laughs> question uh, about this, um, is this something that you brought forward all your life, or is this something that you've grown into, just saying, "What the hell am I going to do next week"? Yeah, no, I, 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 I did. I did have a secret interest in, uh, in sort of a, a circus arts when I was a kid, but uh, I didn't have any talent. <laughs> so, so it was short lived. I didn't even pursue it. But definitely, I'm always fascinated by the circus. And then, and then Cirque du Soleil came into existence later on mm -hmm. and that I was like that is the circus that I love because it's theatrical and it's dark and it's atmospheric and it tells a story and and in there you weave these beautiful talented people uh so I did get attracted to that and I started studying with a clown from the Cirque du Soleil a very well-known clown named uh, John Gilkey who runs a workshop called the Idiot Workshop and uh and 
sort of broadened my interest from there. And uh, so that was about eight years ago is when I really started getting into it. I only learned how to stilt walk about mm, six years ago, maybe, or seven years ago, and got into silks about that time, too. Yeah. So I've been doing all of that for a couple of years now. It's Over to you, CC. It's good to have a backup. <laughs> so, so you know, I, 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 I find you know I've seen a lot of clown movies and I find them very creepy. But it sounds like you mesh very well with them. Yes, I like like my influence really in terms of clown is more of a there's a the red nose clown, clown and the red nose clown is the goofy clown that everybody thinks of as a clown. And the white clown is a little bit of a darker, straighter clown, not, uh, although I love Goofy, uh, but my clown is a little, is a little more uh, rigid and a little, I like, there's something mysterious, you know, it's like Midsummer Night's Dream to me, it's like, uh, it's like fantasy, it's like, I like broaching that edge more than, uh, you know, just your Goofy red nose clown, yeah. But I, I love I love it all. Clowning is really difficult, and so that's very attractive to me. It's it's an art form, and I love it, yeah. And it sounds like you have a very comedic side to you as well. I, uh, I developed that. <laughs> I used to be a really serious person. Uh, but, no, I've developed my funny side, thank God, because it makes life so much better. It makes life so much, much, much more fun. Uh, so I'm glad I let my serious side go about eight years ago, yeah. Yeah. So but, how how hard was it to bridge from horror into comedy? Really hard. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it's it's really hard. Uh, comedy's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's really hard to do comedy. Comedy doesn't just require talent; it requires timing. It requires understanding. It's like it. You, I don't know. Some people might be natural comedians. That's not me. So I had. I'm. I'm still. I'm still learning about it. Yeah, I love it though. That's but, uh, yeah. yeah. And was there anybody who inspired you to want to get more on the comedic side of it? Uh. Yes, this teacher. Uh, well, I, I have I have a couple of teachers. I follow. I'm a bit of a like a. Um, I understand fandom for comedy. So there are teachers that I absolutely adore. One of them is John Gilkey from the Idiot Workshop. Another is David Burdell from the Clown School. Um, Virginia Scott. Uh, she uh, does fantastic stuff uh there's another kind of clown that's a very grotesque kind of clown and 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 it's called buffon i belong to a buffon troupe you can look it up online called milgru m-i-l-g-r-u-s and we did this really grotesque but very funny but very dark uh uh kind of is social commentary clown that i adored um so yeah i follow my teachers around they can't get rid of me. In fact, some of them don't really like me very much, but that's too bad because <laughs> and where I refuse to leave. Huh? Where can we see this work? Well, you can see it online if you're not if you're not in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, because I, I live in a neighborhood. I live in Los Feliz in Los Angeles, and it is actually the clown community lives in my neighborhood. Uh, a lot large part of it just so happens because I've lived here forever, but only discovered this community about eight years ago, as I said. So there's always a little show popping up here and there. You know, they're like in these dark little, you know, laundromats and, you know, crazy little uh, uh, underground places, which I absolutely love. You know, um, I just like the sort of mystery of it and the and the you you have to seek and you shall find. But yeah. So you really have like an underground following then? Yeah, yes. I don't know if I have a clown following, an underground following. I do think that my I do think that my neighbors are really, really grateful and have been, especially during COVID, to get to to get drawn into a beautiful world. Uh, I have received so many um, so many thank yous for creating a world for them to to escape to. Um, um, but I, I'm just I'm not I'm not very good at my at my PR, so I don't know if I have a following because I I'm I'm not uh, I'm not savvy that way. But you know, knock on my door. 
and uh, we can chat. <laughs> can some, I, I hope someone can't just Google your address. Well, let's not talk about it. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> okay, so what do you have upcoming? I have nine dogs, six roommates. Do you hear that, everybody? She has nine nine dogs. Nine barking, <laughs> ferocious chihuahuas. So cut it out. Are they chihuahuas? I can't tell you that. <laughs> really big ones. My security alarm system. So really I, big ones. Really big chihuahuas. They're very nasty. They have very sharp teeth. How about any big projects you have coming up? I do. I have a lot of big projects coming up that I'm really excited about. And they're all horror movies or oh. thrillers. Um, let's see. In March, I'm doing blood-covered chocolate. For Monty Lett. And it is, the thing that I'm really loving is that a lot of the, the, the movies that I'm doing are so diverse, though they all do fit into the horror genre. Mm -hmm. And this one is like just a disturbing, again, it's very much like, it's very much like a, like a, like a, a Ingrid, Ingmar Bergman film. It's a very dark, character driven kind of mental joyride it's it's quite quite crazy so that's blood covered chocolate um savage vengeance vengeance with jake zelch is shooting on the weekends and has been for the past year and i know a weekend is coming up for me sometime this year but i just <laughs> don't know when jake zelch will pull me into savage vengeance and savage vengeance he's a very talented uh filmmaker is um is a remake of an old B movie like you know uh, look it up. It's really campy and fun, and he's remaking it in his own way, and I think it'll be really, really great. Um, so hold that thought for one second. We're going to take another commercial break, and then we want to hear all about the rest of them. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. Links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Come and visit the Universal Energy Expo, May 1st and 2nd at the Northern Kentucky Convention Center. Meet special guests, Shaman Coyote Chris Sutton and Psychic Southern Gypsies. Over 100 readers, healers, and vendors. Admission also includes door prizes, workshops, and all seminars. The Universal Energy Expo. Come curious. Leave enlightened. This week were taken across the ocean to London, England back in 1983. A plumber has been called to a quiet, unassuming apartment building where residents are complaining of clogged pipes. Upon inspection, the plumber discovers the clog is due to chopped up human remains. Investigators are called and quickly discover that the remains came from the apartment belonging to Dennis Nelson. And after questioning Dennis, he admits to having the rest of the body in his closet. After his arrest, Dennis confessed to a total of 16 murders, and the details of his crimes would be compared to those of Jeffrey Dahmer. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. We're going to do a little business first. Um, once again, I will repeat 
Scarefest tickets are on sale. Go to thescarefest.com and go ahead and get your tickets for 2021. Tonight, after the show, Ellen is going to do our little after party. So uh, for our Patreon subscribers, uh, if you'll go hop over to the, uh, the the Zoom link is on Patreon. You can uh, ask your own questions directly to her. Uh, talk to her a minute. We've uh, you, She can actually see your face. So that'll be at the after party. We do that on Zoom. Go to Scarefest. Uh, sorry. Got the, I always do that. Patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. Next week on the show, Mr. Sean Whalen. Mr. Sean Whalen, friend of the show, already been on once or twice. He's coming back to talk about some of his projects. And just a little reminder here, speaker applications for ScareFest 2021 are online. Uh, if you're wanting to speak, uh, do a seminar or something like that, give a speech at ScareFest, get your application Filed. And finally, the Central Kentucky Mystical Market for February had to be canceled due to COVID restrictions. So, um, Watch Horse will be back in uh, March or April, but we did have to cancel February. And last thing, I just want to say, go to scarefestradio.com, click on the gift shop link, and, find, and buy some hats. And mask. We've got mask. We have Scarefest mask. Okay. Back to our special guest, Ellen Beauty, coming to you live from the Clown Underground. Um, I'll let CC cover. I'll let CC cover the uh, the upcoming things. I, I'm still I'm amazed at some of the things you've done. First of all, I cannot believe you do not think you are naturally funny because I watched the downtown Los Angeles Arts District thing that was posted. I, I forget it was IDC DTLA. Basically, it was a yeah, bunch of white. I, I would say it's a bunch of white suburbanites if they were making a rap video or a hip hop <laughs> video. That's how I would describe it. And it it it, it was great. Um, now, one thing: um, how involved were you with the fifteen second horror film challenge? Were you a judge? How did I, I saw a lot of oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was a judge. Uh, it was a really great year. I've been a judge a couple of times. This is my second year being a judge. They're very kind to me because some years I just can't make it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, wow, so impressive what people can do with mm -hmm. 15 seconds. Uh, really, really, really That's impressive. what I that thought. Hard, it was a hard one. I, I watched, like, your top five that you had turned in. These things were better than a lot of horror movies that I've watched. They, I mean, they cram so much. Although I'm, go I'm gonna say it, and here's my f bomb for the evening. There are some sick fuckers out there. <laughs> so, yeah. To put to put true horror in 15 seconds takes a brilliant mind, and some of these people pulled it off spectacularly. Um, yeah. How many of those do you have to watch to? Uh, in a, in a year's time. It could have been a hundred. They're only 15 seconds long. So I was just like going through them. Uh, but the ones that stood out, stood out pretty easily. And none of them were terrible. They were all pretty decent. So. I, I know I watched, I think, I think it was on your top five. Uh, one of the, um, the, the clown that cuts off his nose, um, uh, that was just that little video was just spectacular. Um, and then uh, now my favorite though, I don't know if this was on your top five. There was one, um, get the name of it, but basically the concept was a little blind girl in the woods. I don't know if you remember that one or not, but um, yes, that was scary. That was, <laughs> that one freaked me the hell out. It was so simple, but it was really. Like, whoa, this could be a horror movie for sure, right? It's a great beginning. Now, yeah. one, of your, one of your projects that I'm surprised in my field of expertise that I had not come across, you did a little, um, it's listed on um, IMDb as a TV series, but I'm assuming it was uh, all online. I don't know that. You can correct me. Assignment Unexplained. Oh, I played a psychic? Well, the main thing is, um, 
once again, it goes back to you not saying you don't have comedy roots. That that little series was well written, and you were just perfect for the part you played. Uh, is that Bigfoot hunt? Yeah, big yeah. Uh, they they hunted Bigfoot, and um, and once again, I, I I'm shocked I had not seen it. The uh, how long ago was that? I didn't even look at the dating on it. Actually, you know, that was within the beginnings of my learning comedy. So that was probably about six years ago. Okay. So I had, I had, you know, I had, uh, I had a little more of a background for it at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really fun series. I agree. I think it should have gone further, but it didn't. It was one, you know, it was one of the original. It was six years ago. So even six years ago, there wasn't a lot of that going on. And uh, uh, everybody, Google that. Go to YouTube and look look for that. If you're interested in cryptozoology, that puts it all. It, that little series puts it all into perspective. Um, and the other thing, now this came up, and I actually first noticed it when I was uh, doing the Prime search, but then I I saw you've done, and I guess they're all Lifetime movies, but they call it the wrong series. Yes. Um. Now, I know these are each independent films. In other words, they have nothing, unless it's just a really messed up town where all this goes on. Uh, but. <laughs> Idea. <laughs> <laughs> Not my worst one, probably ever. But in other words, they're very, they're very, very different topics. Um, yeah. And. Uh, but you're in like damn near all of them. How does that work out? Well, I am lucky enough to know fabulous and prolific and wonderful and talented director named David Dakota. Mm -hmm. And David Dakota is the is the uh, is the he's a co-producer. Oh gosh, what is the woman's name who's who produces it? She's a lead in a lot of them, and they produce these movies of the MOWs for uh, for Ion TV and for Hallmark and for sorts of places like that these and this is called the wrong it is the wrong series so they just find different uh different premises uh you know for people to get into trouble with the wrong person yeah. um okay uh now david dakota which I'm, i i butchered it's not even i just name how you say his last name correctly um i know i know that name um you would for sure, yeah. I'm trying to think what his some well, of his, he, his big he, stuff. I mean, he's been around for a really long time. Golly, oh, I should know David Dakota. Wait, what? It, what was it? Oh, what was he did an original horror film? Yeah, look him up because he's famous for an, a a pretty famous horror film. Um, he did a lot of the '80s horror, a lot of '90s horror, not not '80s horror, '90s horror. He did a lot of '90s horror. And then he's doing his own uh, projects under the title of 1313 Films. And those were interesting because they had a, a, a gay bent to them. So they were horror films with a gay with a gay bent to them. Not necessarily a premise, but or they were for the gay community. I don't know. Anyway, and then he just progressed from there to eye on TV and now he produces very slick movies of the week very slick thriller type MOWs and they're always really well written and he's just uh, really good at it and I'm lucky enough that he thinks enough of me that every once in a while he throws me a bone and I'll take it <laughs> uh, he did some of the that's, Puppet Master movies he did some of the Puppet Master yeah, movies the Puppet and that's where I knew yeah. that's where I remembered him from because I, I loved those when they came out CC over to you <laughs> he threw me off. Um, so, Tommy, we were talking about your upcoming projects. That's right. I think we were at Blood Covered Chocolate. Then we did Jake Zelch. Yeah. Um, a movie that obviously Evil Under the Skin with Jeff Snyder has just come out. Uh, I, I hope to be working again with Jeff Snyder this year. In fact, he and I are talking about, uh, with a writer Luke Bernie, are talking about doing a clown movie because he is uh from a circus himself the the director of uh evil under the skin actually traveled with a circus for a number of years and so uh it would be great i hope that we do get to do that but what is truly coming up then i have um 
uh, a movie called The Haunting of Lady Jane, and that's coming up uh, in October. I'm shooting that in England, and that's Kamal Yildrim. And uh, this is this is their first ghost story. Uh, he's won a lot of awards for, for a movie called, oh, geez, Louise, I can't remember the name of the movie. Anyway, it's winning awards right now, and it's out right now, but we're shooting that ghost story in England on, on the canals called The Haunting of Lady Jane. A uh, movie with Matt Burns. Uh, uh, this year, uh, I think that's scheduled for July. We're shooting in July. And that's kind of a sci-fi horror. So that's pretty interesting. I get to play a very nasty, cruel character, which I really like. Uh, and then I, I have to ask, you are doing so many projects. How how are the COVID restrictions affecting your work? Oh, I just want to mention this last one. The, the oh, sure, please. The first, the environment. I can't I can't not mention Rebecca Reinhardt because I just adore her. Uh, I'm doing a movie. Uh, I just finished the Embalmers with her, and we're doing a movie called Tin Roof that her and her lovely friend Rob Mello just uh, wrote, and it's fun because it's going to be a really campy, campy summer camp movie. And I never went to summer camp, so we're going to stay at a summer camp for real and do the whole summer camp thing. And so, like, <laughs> I'm excited to be uh, shooting this campy summer camp movie with Rebecca Reinhardt. But what was your question now? I think I'm done. I, think I mean, done. you're doing a lot of projects, and we're still under a lot of COVID restrictions. So how is this changing the scenes that you're able to do, and, and how's the restrictions affecting your what you're allowed to do in the films? Yeah, well, we had to push back. We were supposed to be shooting, actually, The Haunting of Lady Jane in February. We were supposed to be shooting it now, uh, but we couldn't because I couldn't travel to England. There's so many restrictions there, and so that has put that on the back burner. So a number of films have been sort of struggling to find a, a date. Uh, I might have missed a few. I hope I haven't, but I might have missed a few um, others that are coming up. But... Um, uh, I did just finish shooting a film with a uh, Marco Bazzi called uh, Reflections in a Broken Mirror. And I would say it really does border on horror, but more like an Igmar Bergman horror, a very intense cerebral um, family drama that's very, very disturbing, very disturbing. Um, but we just did uh, all the COVID tests and we just uh, played by the rules. We just, there are a lot of rules uh, for staying safe, we kept our masks on unless we were uh, in the scene itself and they were rolling. And the scenes were with a fewer number of people. I think that that is part of it is is if the fewer people they can have on a set, the, the more we can abide by the restrictions. That is, it's really it's really challenging. But I have to say, I haven't been more busy than I am now. So I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of projects going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Really Very happy. good. Yeah, thank you. Back to you, guys. Hey, everybody. We're going to take our last commercial break of the hour, then we'll be back with one more little thing that we know that Ellen is working on. We'll be right back. Everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full-spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses, and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. 
life. On Facebook, find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Hey, Scarefest fans, it's Joe Lewis. Now, really quick, you see I've changed here around. I got bored of the way the other look, moved some desks around. You get to see more of my house, so that's always a good thing. Now, what I'm going to talk to you today is about, um, there's two movies. One is the original and the other one is the remake. The remake is a Shutter exclusive. It's called Castle Free. The original one came out in the mid 90s and it was one of those Charlie Band new uh, full moon pictures. We've talked about Charlie Band on Bonehead Weekly quite a bit. It's not, it's directed by Stuart Gordon, written by he and Dennis Paoli. And they gave you Reanimator, which is over on my wall over here and from beyond two movies I absolutely love. This is not one of my favorite Stuart Gordon films and Stuart For Gordon films. In fact, it's one of my least favorite Stuart Gordon films. Never did it for me. Thought it was always kind of boring. It's a fairly simple plot. It's loosely, lo loosely based on a Lovecraftian short story. The only thing I often thought that this movie had going for it was that it has Barbara Crampton and Jeffrey Combs. And it's directed by Stuart Gordon. So it has a little bit of pedigree and a little bit of history about it. Charlie Band was a famous, notorious infamous producer and he had a castle and he actually shot a lot of his own movies in this castle he bought the castle to use as a set they did a remake for it it's on shutter like i said it's exclusive this is a little bonehead plug the screenwriter kathy charles is going to be on an upcoming show of ours we're really excited about it it's a little bit like the first one it's about people specifically this woman who's in love with a bad boy she gets in a car accident that's caused by him because of his drinking and drugs. She loses her sight and she finds out she inherits a castle in some Eastern European WTF. And they move there and she's going to sell the castle, right? She's blind. She can't see. There's a freak living in the wall. That's basically kind of the plot of the first one. Someone inherits a castle. There's a freak living in the walls. It's some sort of monster. Now, what I do like about the remake it's a little bit more Lovecrafty, and there's quite a few references to Lovecraft. There's a neat, neat reference right after the credits, in, in the middle of the credits, so stay for that. But here are some of the issues it has. First of all, the original Castle Freak's an hour and a half and slightly boring. This one's an hour and 45 minutes. The extra 15 to 20 minutes does not, it doesn't do it any favors. The first one had the really good cast. This one not so much but i will give compliments to the writer director of the last 15 or 20 minutes of this movie are bug fuck crazy they're just insane i kind of really, i i really can't wait to find out why she did some of those things but it's really gross a lot of sex a lot of toplessness did i mention sex monster sex maybe Things coming out of orifices, Cthulhu. All right, so this is on Shudder. If you have Shudder, do I recommend it? Yes, try to get through the bad acting. God, the acting's awful. Try to get through the bad acting and the low budget and try to make it to that last, well, I'll tell you what, make it to the sex scene, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And then once you're past that, another 10 minutes, the last 15 or 20 minutes, crazy, insane. I liked it. That part is creative. It's gross. It's disgusting, but it was creative. And thing they, they, they went out. So there's a great Mel Brooks line. If you're going to climb the mountain, ring the bell. I will give them credit. They rang the bell. This is not going to be for everyone. And once again, I'm not going to tell you just to get Shudder to watch this. If you have Shudder and you want some sort of gory, freaky movie, then Castle Freak may be for you, the remake. Also, the original may be. I mean, some of you may be mad at me for not. But, I, I mean, if you're going to watch a Stuart Gordon film, Reanimator, From Beyond, Hell Robot Jocks. That's been my review, Castle Freak. 
Tune in next week for something. This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. And welcome back, everybody, to the last couple of minutes of Scarefest TV and our guest, Ellen Udy. Um, okay, now my last question before we talk about the, uh, the, the reunion of my bloody Valentine. Yeah. When, okay, now, I, I hope this doesn't come across as misogynistic. I don't mean it that way. But I did watch <laughs> Evil Under the Skin. Yeah. When did you find you had mastered evil bitch face? <laughs> And if anybody, if you want to know what I'm talking about, go to her IMDb page, and that is the video clip that they have posted there. Um, and I've seen it in a couple of other clips after I noticed it on that one. You, you. <laughs> I know. She's you are not, such a. He's falling from the tree. I've got a bad temper. <laughs> <laughs> you you had such an innocent look about you when you did my my bloody Valentine, and then then I I go to your IMDb page. I'm like, Jesus H Christ. <laughs> Meaner as I get older. <laughs> Maybe that's what it uh, yeah, is. No, no, it might be. I get meaner. No, I'm I'm a dichotomy, uh, but I snap. I'm a snapper. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you get all wide-eyed and any, anyway, moving on yeah. to the uh, the My Bloody uh, Valentine reunion. Um, we've, uh, CC's been posting the links in the chat room, but for those people that are just watching like on YouTube, uh, it's on, um, if you'll, if you'll search for GARF, G-A-R-F -G network. Uh, G-A-R-F, GARF. Yes, G A R F. Um, but but is uh, tomorrow uh, the thirteenth because apparently nobody wants to work Sunday. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I would believe the does the banner you found show the time, CC? Um, yes, it does. It actually shows that it is a uh, one o'clock um, Eastern. Where did I see that? One o'clock. Wait, on this one it says time to be announced. Well, oh, that's we're well, it we're announcing it. We're uh, we announcing it right now. <laughs> we believe it is at one o'clock Eastern time on Facebook. If you PM Eastern, yes. Okay. One if you ten a.m. Pacific, and I'm not sure what Central is. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, that would put it noon Central. Noon Central, if for anybody playing uh, the home game. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, that that's our show for the night. But everybody, if you loved my bloody Valentine, they are having a cast reunion via video. I think it's on Twitch too. I think I saw that. But yes. uh, if you if you go to uh, do a search on Facebook for Garf Network, um, you can join in that. And I, I also believe I saw that it's free, free to watch. So um, uh, everybody support if you love that movie, go support it. Um, it's. I should Looks have had like the notes pulled up. Time. Yes, it's going to be fun. It's fun because we we have Neil with us and uh, and uh, and George with us. Neil is the lead the, the lead bad guy who we're talking hard to get Neil, but uh, he's he's going to be there, so it'll be really fun. Amazing, amazing, yeah. So everyone, this has been Scarefest Television once again. If you want to hop over to our Patreon project, patreon.com slash Scarefest Radio. Still time to join. You can join in. We will be online after this via Zoom. The link is already on there. It's real easy to find. Thanks, everybody, for watching.